This is San Diego News Daily. Hello and welcome to San Diego News Daily. I'm Jackie Crea. We have some news headlines to get to. Caltrans has an update on highway repairs in Oceanside. The agency announcing yesterday it hopes to reopen the eastbound lanes of the 78th the week of May 8th. Now, as we've reported, that section of freeway has been undergoing repairs because of storm damage earlier this year. The driver accused of killing a toddler while driving under the influence in City Heights last year is heading to trial. It happened last September when one year old Anna Lee was crossing the street near her grandmother's house. Police say the suspected driver, 45 year old Margarito Angeles Vargas, kept going. Eight witnesses took the stand in court yesterday. One neighbor said he saw what happened and followed Vargas. Investigators say after Vargas left the scene, he stopped to get food from a street vendor. Soon after, police arrested him at his home. In court yesterday, one detective said, based on security video, it is very unlikely Vargas did not know he hit the girl. Police say this isn't the first time Vargas has been charged with driving under the influence. He also has a prior DUI from 2016. The U.S. Army has grounded part of its aviation program. The decision comes after two helicopter crashes that killed 12 soldiers. Everything is grounded except those flying critical missions. The stand down will last until the pilots complete safety training. On Thursday, three pilots were killed when two Apache helicopters crashed during a training mission in Alaska. Last month, nine soldiers were killed when two Black Hawk choppers crashed in Kentucky. Both are under investigation. In San Isidro, nearly 90 immigrants were detained after crossing the Tijuana River into the U.S. We're told it happened just west of the port of entry yesterday morning. In all, 88 immigrants who are from different countries, including Congo, Ireland, Turkey, and Colombia, were taken in for processing. Four were taken to the hospital for unknown injuries. This is the latest group to cross into the country. Just a few weeks ago, a large group was detained after being stuck in between the fences of the U.S.-Mexico border. Two teachers from Rincon Middle School filed a lawsuit challenging the district's transgender student policy. The teachers accused the Escondido Union School District of prohibiting them from discussing students' gender identities with their parents. The lawsuit says teachers are required to use pronouns and preferred names and identity by students during school, then revert to biological pronouns and legal names when speaking with their parents. The teachers say that's unconstitutional, and the school district argues it interferes with the fundamental right of parents to raise their children and protect them. The central legal issue here when this lawsuit is forcing the teachers to force the district to have to disclose that information to the parents. In essence, it's allowing the teachers to implement themselves, to act as a parent or guardian, and to disclose the information that that student does not want to share. That law is Assembly Bill 1266. It was signed into law in 2013. It allows transgender students to keep their identity Private disclosing that a student is transgender without the student's permission may violate the state's anti-discrimination law. The lives of a San Marcos family were forever changed when a suspected drunk driver killed a mother and her young daughter. The crash happened Sunday afternoon near Bonzal. Now Courtney and Amaya Taylor's family are sharing their heart-wrenching story. They told NBC7's Amber Frias they learned about the crash through a notification on their phone. It sent her location and um, a message to all of her close contacts. So my mom and I both got a text message at the same time. So we just hopped right in the car and we headed up the 15. They drove right into the area of the crash, witnessed the wreckage, and immediately knew Courtney and her four-year-old daughter, Amaya, were not okay. I just started screaming and I felt like I was going to like collapse um, on the fence. According to prosecutors, 23-year-old Eric Arambula was driving northbound on Old Highway 395 in Fallbrook when a California Fish and Wildlife officer witnessed him running a red light. The officer began chasing him, but soon stopped after Arambula sped off. Arambula, who was in a truck, then swerved into oncoming traffic, came down an embankment and crashed head-on into Courtney and Amaya, killing them. According to the CHP, Arambula was driving under the influence. It's devastating because, you know, like people do things like that. People drink and drive. People do so many things that are unsafe because we take 
so much for granted and we take life for granted. Um, and it's never you until it's you. Today, Courtney and Amaya's loved ones are remembering the mother-daughter duo for their kind and loving personalities. You ever felt like you needed a friend? She was there for you immediately to make sure that you were not alone. Megan Santiago had been friends with Courtney since the two were in high school. Even their kids were best friends. Uh, Courtney would come over almost every day after work um, or on the weekends we would get together. Santiago still can't believe Courtney and Amaya are gone, but she says she's focusing her time on honoring their memory and helping their family fundraise. It's just been the best thing in the world to see the community come together over here. I'm blown away. As for the Taylor family, they hope their story prevents others from driving drunk. There truly is no such thing as justice when people die. Um, we all need to be careful and we all need to be kind, just like Courtney was and Amaya. Amber Frias, NBC7. Brooke Martell will have a look at your weather right after this. Only one team in San Diego is certified most accurate. NBC7's First Alert Weather. What does that mean for you? Helping you plan ahead with our hour-by-hour -hour forecasts. And knowing exactly when rain will move in. First Alert Weather is coverage you count on. Hey there, I'm NBC7's Brooke Martell. Taking a look at your future weather pattern on this Saturday, we had the overcast sky conditions throughout the morning. We'll definitely get some high-level clouds passing over throughout your afternoon periodically, expecting more of that at the coastline. But the good news is, with all of this, you get calm wind conditions, and you're also getting that sunshine in the mix. Let's take a look at these daytime highs, what we can expect for this Saturday. We have 60s and 70s out along the coast, and we're looking at 60s for places like Chula Vista. We have 70s for areas like Poway, but mid 80s for Ramona. So we kind of have a wider range for the Inland Valley communities when it comes to these temperatures and over the mountain communities right around those low to mid 80s today. Triple digit temperatures in the forecast for the, de the desert region. We are staying dry and hot over there. I'll send it back over. Okay, thank you, Brooke. So there's no place like home, right? Three bear cubs who were found alone in the wild, not expected to survive on their own, are now back where they belong. The California Department of Fish and Wildlife rescued the cubs last summer and placed them in the care of the San Diego Humane Society. Two of the cubs are a brother and sister who were orphaned in the San Bernardino Mountains. The third cub lost its mother in a car crash near Lake Arrowhead. They all spent nine months at the San Diego Humane Society's Ramona Wildlife Center, undergoing special care by the Project Wildlife Team. Doctors say all three cubs were microchipped and are healthy. There's more coverage you can count on at NBC7.com. You can always find us on your Roku or Samsung Smart TV app. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jackie Crea.